Next, we consider more general mappings. That is, mapping uh, mappings from uh, n-dimensional Euclidean space to m-dimensional Euclidean space. So far, we have been considering uh, the case where m is equal to 1, but uh, in general, it can be more than 1. But before that, we first define the total differentiability of uh, general multivariate functions. That is, let's see, uh, u is a subset open region in n-dimensional space, and consider the function f of x from u to real numbers. Okay, and we say f is totally differentiable if uh, there exists constants m1, m2, up to mn constants, real numbers, such that uh, f of x is a plus m1 x1 a1 m2 x2 a2 and so on up to mn xn minus an plus little o uh, distance between x and a. Of course, uh, x is a point in U, and A is also a point in U. And of course, we are, uh, you know, this is asymptotic expansion, so we are considering the case where x is close enough to A. Uh, okay, uh, so if this holds, then we say uh, f of x is totally differentiable at a. Okay, so and if this holds for every point in u, every a in u, then we say f of x is totally differentiable on u. So this is a generalization of total differentiability. Uh, so before previously we defined this total differentiability on uh, two-dimensional Euclidean space, but now we have defined the same thing for n-dimensional Euclidean space, and just like in two-dimensional case, we have so if if f of x is totally differentiable at a, we have uh, this relationship. So these each of these constants m1, m2, and so on. These are equal to the differential coefficient of f at, with respect to xi at a. <coughs> ah, it's not ai, it should be a. For each of i from 1 to up to m. So, uh, this asymptotic expansion gives a equation for the hyperplane in n-dimensional space. Just like for the case of two-dimensional uh, space, uh, we have the following theorems, uh, the proof of which we just omit. Okay, uh, theorem. So the proofs, proofs are exactly like the two-dimensional case. Anyway, so if a function f of x, which is a uh, function of n variables is totally differentiable at a then it is 
continuous at A. Okay, uh, we don't prove this one. Uh, the proof is very similar to the two-dimensional case. And another theorem. Uh, okay, U is an open region in n-dimensional space. And f of x is a function of n variables. So define on this open region U. And suppose A is a point in U. And then, if all derivatives uh, f uh, x i and i is from one to n uh, exist, and they are continuous. Then f of x is totally differentiable. Differentiable at x equal to a. This should be trivial from the definition of total differentiability. So we skip the proof. Next, we define the differentiability class in the same manner as a uh, two-dimensional case. Like a class C, uh, C0, C1, C2, and so on, in general, CR, and possibly C infinity. Okay, So this means the function is continuous. And this means the first derivatives exist. Uh, with respect to all of the variables, and they are continuous. And this one, all the second derivatives exist and are continuous. So it just like this uh, 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 two-dimensional case. So this is all our, uh, our derivatives exist and they are continuous. And this means all derivatives, derivatives of any order exist. And we also have a, a theorem that says we can uh, change the order of differentiation if uh, the derivatives are continuous. So that means uh, if we have a function of n variables, And uh, if uh, we have all the second derivatives and they are all continuous, then uh, we have uh, we can swap the order of uh, derivatives, differentiations. So that means uh, first we differentiate with respect to xi, then we differentiate with respect to uh, xj, so that is a second derivative. Uh, first, dif uh, differentiate with, res with respect to xi, then xj. Then, if this is continuous, and also uh, the derivative in the opposite order, reverse order, I, X, J. So if these exist and they are continuous, then we can uh, say that they are actually equal. And the proof is uh, very easy. So except for these two variables, all other variables may be considered as constants. So uh, these functions are effectively of two variables. So the proof of two variable case applies and we are done. 
Now let's talk about more general mappings. So as usual, let's say U is a open region in the n-dimensional Euclidean space. And suppose we have n functions. So f1 uh, from U to R, f2 from U to R, and so on, up to fm from U to R. Okay, so let's say we have these functions and we can define a function from uh, u to m-dimensional dim m Euclidean space by defining uh, this. And of course, x is an element of u. So this is a vector uh, with m components, each of which is a, is a result of the application of each of these functions. So in this way, uh, we can define a mapping. And the same terminology applies to this, like uh, uh, differentiable, totally differentiable. Uh, that we will explain later, and uh, differentiability classes like uh, C0, C1, CR, which means uh, each of these uh, components is of this, uh, this differentiability class. Uh, then uh, we say this mapping itself is also of this class. Okay. We can also consider composite functions of general mappings. So suppose U is an open region in n-dimensional space and V is an open region in, uh, in the m-dimensional space and consider a mapping f from u to uh, m-dimensional space and g from v to uh, l-dimensional Euclidean space. Then f of x is uh, something like this. It has m components, and of course x is a point in U. Which is a subset of n-dimensional space. And g of y it has uh, l components. L, Y, and Y is uh, Y has M components. Uh, M components, which is an element of V, which is a subset of the M-dimensional Euclidean space. Now, suppose uh, suppose that the image of f of u, uh, f is a subset of v. Okay, so this is uh, this is a set. Okay, so this is an image of uh, of this mapping f. So it's a set of all points that are mapped by this mapping. Okay. Uh, in other words, uh, we can write the definition of this image by uh, uh, maybe like uh, this. Uh, 
or if you like uh, y such that y is uh, like this now uh, we can define the composite function g after f which maps the open region U to uh, the the L dimensional space uh, by this G after F of X is defined by H1 of X, H2 of X and so on and HL of X and each of these H H's are like uh, like this. H K of X is defined by uh, G K of F one of X, F two of X, and so on, and until F uh, M of X. And K is from one to up to L. Okay, remember uh, each component of G here, G1, G2, and so on, takes a variable y, but y is a m dimensional vector. So it takes m arguments or m variables. So it, it has one, two, th three, up to m variables. So this is a it's just a, a composition of uh, func these functions. And in this way, we can define the composition of the mappings G and F. Next, let's consider uh, the derivatives of these functions. So uh, first of all, uh, consider uh, the mapping F. So each component, f1, f2, and so on, ha so there are m components, and each of these has uh, n variables. So that means we have n times m uh, different deri first derivatives. So that is uh, derivative of uh, fj with respect to xi where uh, i is from 1 to up to n and j is 1 to up to m. So there are m by n uh, different derivatives. And for g, for the function g, it has uh, l, uh, l components and each of these has uh, m variables. So for that we have uh, g derivatives such as gk, uh, dgk, and yj. Uh, and j is from 1 to up to m and k is from 1 to up to uh, L. So there are L, L times M different derivatives. Now, what about the der derivatives of the composite function? So uh, G after F. So according to the definition, it has L components and the result of this mapping it has L components and each of which has n variables. So x is a, a point in the n dimensional space. So it has n co components. And, and the elements are uh, here we, we used uh, the letter h, so its derivatives will be like dh k 
okay and uh, dx uh, i so i is from 1 to n and k is from 1 to l so we have n times l derivatives Now let's prove this chain rule for uh, general mappings. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, we can consider only one of these uh, zk's uh, one by one uh, each time at a time. So. That means we can just uh, consider the case where L is equal to uh, if L is equal to one, and also we can consider the derivative with respect to x i, so with for each x i at a time. So that means we can consider only one of the x's. So effectively, we uh, may reduce the case where uh, n is equal to one. Okay, so uh, what we need to consider is something like this. So just consider L equal to 1, so there is only one z variable that is expressed as a function of h, just one function, with m variables. And each of these y1, y2, and so on, uh, yj, is uh, mapped by the function gj of x and x is just a real number yeah, it's not a vector it's a real number so we just uh, uh, find the chain rule for this composite function okay and When m is equal to 2, this is the same as uh, the two variable case, which we have uh, already proved before. And general uh, for general m, we can prove in the same manner. So, so I think that should be OK. And, and from from this equation, uh, the derivative is continuous. So that is a uh, derivative of h k of uh, h uh, x i is continuous because it's the sum and product of continuous functions. Uh, so if you look at this so we are assuming uh, these functions are of class C1. So this is continuous, and this is continuous. And the product of continuous functions is continuous, and the sum of continuous functions is continuous. So after all, this derivative is continuous. So, so this means uh, is continuous. So this means all the derivatives are continuous. Therefore, the composite function uh, g after f is of class C1. So that is continuously differentiable. And we are done. OK, now let's uh, talk about the Jacobian matrix. and matrix. As we've seen before already, uh, for a general mapping such as f of x, f1, x, f2 of x, and f m of x, where x is an n-dimensional vector, Uh, 
uh, we have a lot of derivatives such as fj uh, with respect to uh, xi and and i varies from 1 to n and j varies from 1 to m so we can arrange these derivatives in a matrix form and that matrix is called the Jacobian matrix of F and we write Jacobian of F at uh, A as the matrix define its IJ element is now here we use I here <coughs> and J at A so that is something like this uh, so Anyway, so that is uh, F1, X1, A, and F1, X2, A, and F1, Xn, and A, and F2, X1, A, F2, X2, A f2 x n a and f m x1 a and f m x n of a so this is a uh, m by M, M by N matrix and such a mat matrix is called the Jacobian matrix of F evaluated at point A. Now consider the case uh, where M is equal to 1. So we have a function F of X which is just a function uh, of and variables. So the result of this function is just a real number. <coughs> then the Jacobian matrix is just a row vector. So Jacobi Jacobian of F evaluated at A is equal to F, uh, derivative of F with respect to x1 at A, uh, with respect to x2 at A, and so on. So this is a row vector. Uh, so it's, uh, you can say this belongs to this n-dimensional Euclidean space. And this vector defines a linear function on the n-dimensional vector space. Uh, so what, what, what that means is this. So if you have a vector, a column vector, v1, v2 and vn so this can be mapped to this so this times so this is a row vector and you multiply that with the column vector the result is actually the uh, the dot product between these two vectors so that is uh, fx1a times v1 fx2a uh, times v2 and so on uh, vn so this is a linear function and the coefficients are given by this differential coefficients at a and this function gives uh, the linear term in the in uh, the asymptotic expansion, first order asymptotic expansion. That is, uh, so the first order asymptotic expansion is something like this. Uh, uh, Fx1 of A, V1, 
fxn of a times vn where v1 is equal to x1 minus a1 and v2 is x2 minus a2 and so on xn minus an and of course plus uh, the little o and this idea of linear mapping can be extended to more general mapping that maps not only to real numbers but also to m-dimensional point so if you have a general mapping such as uh, f from u which is a subset of n-dimensional space to m-dimensional space then you can calculate the Jacobian of that at some point and this can induce a linear mapping uh, from V uh, which is an element of uh, what is it uh, n-dimensional space to uh, Jacobian of uh, F at A times V. So since okay this is n-dimensional uh, vector and this is a matrix of m times n. So m rows and n columns. So if you multiply that matrix with this vector of n-dimensional then the result is a vector in the m-dimensional space. So from that, we can find the, uh, the asymptotic expansion of f of x as uh, something like this, plus Jacobian of a of v, where v is, is a difference between x and a as uh, column vectors, and plus some uh, uh, small terms, small uh, terms uh, of order of uh, x minus a. Now, if we use the Jacobian matrix, we can express uh, the chain rule in a concise manner. Okay, so consider uh, two mappings. from an open region U to uh, m-dimensional space and V to L-dimensional space and we assume that the image of F is included in V then we can define G after F and now the chain rule was something like this so zk so this is the result of uh, this composite function uh, map mapping i was zk and yj and yj and xi and sum over j from 1 to n now this looks like a matrix multiplication in fact, if we define, for example, a matrix Cij by, uh, let's see, not Cij, C, uh, let's see, Ki as this. Uh, another matrix here, and let's see, A, <coughs> uh, Kj, Yj, and uh, Bji as Dyj, Dxi. Then this is just a matrix multiplication, C, A, B. Okay. 
So if we evaluate uh, these derivatives at point A, for example, uh, that result will be something like this. And uh, so this matrix C is actually the Jacobian of G after F evaluated at A. And this matrix A is the Jacobian of G evaluated at F of A. And this B is the Jacobian of F evaluated at A. So, the chain rule can be expressed very concisely in terms of a matrix multiplication. And as we've seen before, the Jacobian matrix gives the uh, yields the linear approximation for the mapping. So for in this case, uh, in this case G after F uh, can be approximated linearly by this Jacobian. And what this says is that the linear approximation of a composite mapping ca is same as the composite of linear approximations, right? So this is a linear approximation of F, and this is a linear approximation of G. And their, mat their product is the composite of linear approximations. So yeah, so the linear approximation of the composite mapping is the composite of linear approximations. And that's a nice result. So this is actually uh, consistent with linear algebra, where uh, composition of linear uh, trans transformations is again a linear transformation. So it makes sense.